Hello everyone, Prasad Domla here. In this video, I'll show you how to set up AWS Client VPN and access private AWS resources across peered VPCs in multiple AWS accounts. So let's get started. Before jumping onto the console and start setting up our Client VPN, let me briefly talk about what a Client VPN is and why we need it. A VPN or Virtual Private Network in general allows you to create a secure connection to another network over the internet. AWS Client VPN does the same thing. It creates a secure connection between your laptop or desktop and your VPC on AWS. This connection enables us to access private resources using their private IPs and host names. It's a managed service, meaning it's managed by AWS and removes the overhead of deploying and maintaining our own VPN server. It's highly scalable and scales based on the number of users connecting to the VPN endpoint. It supports AD authentication and certificate-based authentication. I'll show you both the methods in this demo. You can control access to specific networks using authorization rules and security groups. It supports split tunneling, which basically allows only AWS-specific traffic through the VPN connection, and all other internet-bound traffic will flow like normal and won't use the VPN connection. This is optional. You can disable split tunneling and send all the traffic through the VPN connection based on your uh, requirement. It's easy to use and manage. You can view and monitor all the connections and admins can even terminate the connections from the AWS console or uh, CLI. There are some limitations for this client VPN. These limitations are important and will affect your network architecture. So it's always a good practice to keep these limitations in mind before designing your VPN solution. The first limitation is that our client cider and VPC ciders must not overlap. You might have heard this limitation while creating VPC peering connections. It applies for client VPN as well. Additionally, the cider should not overlap with the client cider. A client cider is nothing but the range of IPs given to the client when a VPN connection is established. We'll see that in detail during the demo. The next limitation is that the VPN endpoint and the associated VPC must be in the same AWS account and all subnets associated with the client VPN must be in the same VPC. And we cannot associate multiple subnets from the same availability zone. And client VPN supports only IPv4 traffic. If you're using IPv6, it's not supported. And keep in mind that client VPN is not HIPAA or uh, FIPS uh, compliant. So these are the limitations of client VPN and I strongly recommend to consider these before designing your VPN solution. Now let's have a look at the architecture of what we'll be building today. I'll be using three AWS accounts for this demo to demonstrate cross-account access. I'm calling my accounts as shared, dev, and prod. As you can see, I have my dev and prod VPCs, each with one EC2 instance in respective private subnets. And my shared account will host the VPN endpoint. And I have a VPC in my shared account as well with peering connections to my dev and prod VPCs. I have three subnets in my shared VPC with a route table attached to them. And this route table will have routes to my dev and prod VPCs through peering connections. I'll associate my client VPN with my subnets in availability zones 2B and 2C. Currently 2A is not supported in Sydney region. That might change in future. So these private subnets in my shared VPCs can be called as target networks in client VPN terminology. We need at least one target network for client VPN to work. So here I'm using two target networks, one in each availability zone for high availability. Next, we have the client VPN endpoint itself, and we have a security group attached to it to control inbound and outbound connectivity to the endpoint. We can control access using authorization rules as well. For example, if you have an AD group called VPN users and you want to allow connections to the VPN just for this AD group, you can do it using authorization rules. You can use AD for your VPN authentication, and you can also use certificate-based authentication using ACM. I'll be showing both the methods in this demo. VPN endpoint will also have a route table attached to it using which we can control which networks end users can access through this VPN endpoint. For example, if you want to allow connectivity just to your dev VPC and not your prod VPC, you can achieve it using a VPN route table. These routes are also propagated to the client on end users machine so that the client will know which traffic is to be routed through the VPN endpoint and which should go directly to the internet when you enable split tunneling. And finally, on the client machine, we have to install a client to connect to our VPN endpoint. And after setting all this up, our goal is to access our private instances in private subnet using the private IPs. Let me point out the limitations quickly while we are on this architecture screen. If we have a look at the CIDR blocks I'm using here, 
There is no overlap. My shared VPC is using 10.2, dev VPC is using 10.3, prod is using 10.4, and I'm assigning 20.0 for my clients. So these CIDR ranges must not overlap with each other. So that's the first limitation. Next, the VPN endpoint, VPC and the subnets must be in the same AWS account. In my case, it's a shared AWS account. You cannot have the endpoint in shared account and associated VPC in the dev or prod accounts. That's another limitation. If you observe the target networks here, we have one target network per availability zone. We cannot associate multiple subnets from the same availability zone. So those are the limitations to keep in mind. Let me log into my AWS console and show my environment. I'm logged into my dev VPC and I have my EC2 instance in private subnet with a private IP and it does not have any public IP. And if I go to my VPC console, I have an active peering connection to my shared VPC. And I have the same setup in my prod account. I have my prod EC2 instance and an active peering connection to my shared VPC. Now let me go to my shared account where we'll be doing all our uh, VPN related configuration. In my shared VPC, I have three private subnets, which I'll be associating with uh, VPN endpoint. Under VPC peering, I have two active peering connections to my dev and prod VPCs. And my private route table has routes to these uh, peering connections. I also have my simple AD configured. I created a test user in my simple AD. I'll use this user to log into my uh, client VPN. Now let's create certificates required for certificate based or uh, mutual authentication. We'll be using OpenVPN Easy RSA utility to create our server and client certificates. So all the commands I use in this video can be found on my uh, blog. I'll leave the link in the description. First, let's clone Easy RSA repository from GitHub. And navigate into uh, Easy RSA 3 folder within the repo. Next, we need to initialize a new PKI or public key infrastructure. We can do it using easy RSA init PKI command. Our PKI is now initialized. Once we have our PKI initialized, we need to build our certificate authority using build CA command. And I'm not using any uh, password here using no pass. You'll be prompted for a common name for the CA. I'll call it as uh, clientvpndemo.com and we'll have a new ca.crt file created inside our uh, PKI folder. Now we can create our server and client certificates using build server full and build client full commands. Let's create our server certificate first. That's easy RSA, build server full, and I'll call my server as uh, clientvpndemo.com and I'll use uh, no pass. Our server certificate is now created. Let's create our client certificate now. So when creating client certificates, it's always better to create one certificate per user so that you can revoke the user specific certificates when the user leaves the organization or no longer need VPN access. Here I'm calling mine as uh, pdomla.clientvpndemo.com. So I'll use easy RSA, build client full, and then uh, pdomla.clientvpndemo.com, and then no pass. All our certificates are now uh, ready. Let's upload these to ACM. At this stage, make sure you have your AWS profile or access keys set. Let me first copy all the certs into a single folder so that it will be easy uh, while uploading through the CLI. This is optional, you don't need to do it. First, let's copy our uh, CA.CRT file from our PKI folder. Then the server and client certificates from issued folder and the private keys for these certificates will be in the private folder. So now I have all my certs in my ACM folder. Let me navigate to that folder. Now let's import both these certificates into ACM using AWS CLI. So we need to use ACM import certificate command and input the file names for certificate, private key, and certificate chain, which is our uh, ca.crt. Our server certificate is imported. Let's do the same for our client certificate. Let's quickly verify the certs on ACM console. As you can see, we have both the certificates imported into ACM. Now let's set up the client VPN endpoint. From the VPC console, click on client VPN endpoints under VPN section. 
and click Create Client VPN Endpoint. Let me call this Demo VPN and provide some description. For client side or range, I'll specify 20.0.0.0 slash 16. End users will get an IP from this range when they connect to the VPN. So this range must be between slash 16 and slash 22. I'm using slash 16 for this demo. Also, please note that this cannot be changed once the VPN endpoint is created. Under authentication, we need to select our uh, server certificate, which we just uploaded. As I mentioned earlier, we have two options, mutual authentication, which is nothing but certificate based uh, authentication. And the second one is user based authentication, which is Active Directory based uh, authentication. I'll select both these checkboxes for this demo and select my uh, client certificate and my uh, directory, which is my uh, simple AD. Next, we have logging options. So let me select yes here. And uh, in a separate window, let me create a new log group. Coming back to my VPN window, click refresh here to populate the newly created uh, log group and select it. You can leave the log stream name as empty and the stream will be uh, created automatically. Under optional parameters, I'll leave the DNS servers as empty to use the default AWS DNS servers. And the transport uh, protocol, I'll leave it as UDP. I'll enable split tunneling, select my VPC. The default security group of that VPC will be selected automatically. If you want, you can create a new security group and assign it to the VPN endpoint. I'll leave the default security group for this demo. Finally, I'll leave uh, 443 as my VPN port and click Create Client VPN Endpoint. It should take less than a minute to create the endpoint. We should receive a successful message. Let's close the screen. By default, the status of our VPN endpoint will be pending associate because uh, we haven't associated our endpoint with any target networks yet. So let's do that now. Let's go to the Associations tab and click Associate. Let's select our VPC and select our private subnets in 2B and 2C. Remember 2A is not supported in Sydney region. You'll get a message when you select a subnet in unsupported availability zone. The association process might take around five minutes. I'll pause the video here and resume when the association uh, process is complete. Both my subnets are now in associated state an endpoint status is available. If we go to security groups tab, we have our default security group attached. This can be changed whenever it's uh, required. The advantage of this security group is that you can use the security group ID as source in your uh, EC2 security groups. This enables us to allow access to your uh, EC2 instances only through client VPN. Next, we have authorization tab. As I mentioned earlier, we can define destination networks we would like to allow as authorization rule. Let me add uh, rules for my uh, dev side range and uh, prod side range. Click on authorize ingress. For destination network, I'll provide my dev side range. You can provide access to all users or specific AD group. If you have a different set of users for your dev and prod accounts, you can create an ingress rule specific for that uh, AD group. I'll provide access to all users for this demo and provide some description here. I'll add another rule for my prod VPC. You can add all the networks you wish to allow access as authorization rules. Both my rules are now active. Let's move on to the route table. As we can see, we have the default routes for my shared VPC. Let's add routes to our dev and prod VPCs. Click on create route. And for destination, I'll provide my dev side block. And for target subnet, you can choose uh, one of the subnets. Let me provide some description. And I'll repeat the process for my uh, other subnet.
Same for my uh, prod cider. We need to add two routes. The routes are in uh, creating state. It might take a minute or two to create these routes. Okay, all my uh, routes are now active. And on the connections tab, you can see all the active connections and you can add required tags in the tags tab. So that's our client uh, VPN endpoint configuration done. So let's download the config by clicking the download button here. This config file includes a client VPN endpoint and certificate information required to establish a VPN connection. We should make a couple of changes to this config file before sending it to the clients or the end users. The first one is the endpoint. We need to add a random string before the endpoint's DNS name. Let me add some random string here. Next, we need to add a certificate and private key paths. So at the end of this file, add certain key values. When you're sending this config file to your end users, you should send the certain key files as well and advise them to modify the paths depending on where they download the files on their local machines. Next, we need to download and install the client on your local machine. You can download the client from AWS website. AWS provides clients for Mac and Windows. I have the client installed on my Mac. Let me open it. We now need to add our profile using the config file. Let's go to File, Manage Profiles and add a profile. We can provide a display name. I'll just call it as Client VPN Demo and choose your config file and click on Add Profile. Now we can select our profile and click Connect. You'll be asked for your AD username and password. Provide the credentials and click Connect. And I'm now connected to my uh, VPN. If I go back to my VPN console, I should be able to see active connection. This is my active VPN connection. And as I mentioned earlier, admins can terminate connections from here. Now that our VPN uh, connection is established, let's try to SSH into our private EC2 instances in our dev and prod uh, VPCs. Let me get the private IP of my uh, dev EC2 instance. I have my SSH key already downloaded. I'll connect to it using my key. The user will be EC2 user as these are uh, test instances or Amazon Linux 2 instances. As you can see, I'm logged into my uh, private EC2 instance using private IP. Let me quickly log into my prod instance as well, which is in my prod AWS account. Let me get the IP and connect using my prod key. and I'm logged into my uh, prod EC2 instance. So that is the process of setting up your client VPN on AWS and access private resources across peered VPCs in multiple AWS accounts. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.